No matter what I do, I'm constantly faced with this, this fact or this reality that, you know, it's me. I have to get myself to put that extra effort in. The decathlon comes down to you versus the clock or you versus the measuring tape. I've seen races where the winner and the loser is decided by a hundredth of a second. You know, the time that it takes you to clap your hands or, or a snap or blink an eye. Those things can be the difference between a gold medal and no medal at all. There's nothing more lonely than sitting in a hotel room, you know, halfway across the world, away from your family, away from your friends, and know that, you know, the country is expecting you to win a gold medal that's only given to one person in the world. It's really, really difficult, but um, I can honestly say with, with all the times that I feel that pressure and I, and I feel that loneliness, I, I, I have never, ever actually been alone. It's 2012, of course. Um, it's Olympic year again. Uh, and my goal is to, to make the Olympic team again and to try to go out and win a third medal. Uh, nobody's ever won three medals in terms of the decathlete. That would be the first time in history it's ever been done. You're talking a 12-year career of being at the top. It is not an easy task. Ready? Go. Going to the 2008 Olympics, I'd already won the silver medal at the Athens Olympics, and then I had won the world championships in 2005, and so I'm really coming in as the heavy favorite. I mean, the pressure was just bone crushing. I get on the plane and I find this little book that my wife had snuck into my backpack when I wasn't looking. And I'm like, what's this? And I see all this scribble scrabble on there with crayons and stuff. And I look and it's this little letter from my son. And my wife had typed it out for him. And it said, uh, Daddy, I, you know, Daddy, I love you. And then there was a little verse. The Lord is my, my helper and my strength, and, and I will not be afraid. I took that, that one line, I will not be afraid, I took that with me through the entire time that I was in Beijing. And, and it really is what got me through that, that whole process. I can if you won't let go, but it's all. When I had first won the gold medal, the second I stepped over the line, I had this slideshow of my life, the, the highs and the lows, and I mean, just everything just kind of went through my head and it was, it was kind of all kind of in fast forward. And then it would just stop on, on a specific moment. Not everybody understands that when I say that I was a bad kid, like I really was a bad kid. Um, I was headed down the wrong path uh, from a very young age. I was one of those kids where I didn't know any other emotion than anger. And I remember my mom, you know, rushes me to a counselor and, and, the, and the counselor, um, he says, you need to get him involved in sports if you want him to be, you know, if you want him to be around in a few years. You know, if you don't want to see him in prison, and you don't want to see him dead, you gotta find something for him. So she says, uh, you can either swim or you can run track and field. Choose one. And, and you know, I, at that age, I didn't wanna wear a Speedo, so I chose track and field, and, and you know, the rest is history. Track is a very small window. I see it as a very small window in my entire life. And the majority of my life is gonna be spent out being a husband and a father that is why my faith comes first, my family comes second, and track and everything else comes third. When I look back on my life, the thing that I see is that God was always there. He was always there guiding me and, and walking with me and teaching me the lessons that I needed to learn through that journey. And, and, and I think that's what really matters. It's the journey. It's not about the accolades. It, 
It's what you went through to get to the end.